there, Licking Riffers. I'm not holding one of my guitars right now because I'm holding this. This is a shamisen. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a shamisen. It's a Japanese instrument. And Kyle here, the guy you're looking at, the good-looking dude oh. uh, <laughs> to my side, is, uh, is a shamisen teacher expert. And he also has a store. He's a teacher, online teacher, and he's gonna teach us the ways of the shamisen. Now, I just want to show you how gracious uh, and generous Kyle is. Not only did he send me this shamisen, which is a beginner shamisen, but it's a fantastic instrument. I don't know if you can see the wood on this thing. This is, it's a pretty solid instrument. It's really, really nice. It includes everything, and it also comes with this <laughs> thing, which is the pick. Hey, compare, you know, compare. Th this to me is crazy. This is... <laughs> it takes a little getting used to, for sure. Yeah, and it also, it came with this little gift boat. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it, it had all these, it had the strings in it, uh, it had, this is, uh, this is a DIY kit, actually. And I put it together, and it was actually really easy. Now, I want you to see how beautiful this thing is. Such a beautiful instrument, this. And before we start, and before we give Kyle the stage, um... I want to show you another thing he sent me. He sent me this. This is his book. This is an entire book of learning, you know, how to play the shamisen, including pictures. It's, it's a superbly produced book. And the fact that he, including tabs, it's tabs, by the way. So, um, so that was very, very nice of you, um, Kyle. And <laughs> Um, Kyle has a really good sense of humor. Uh, it, it, here, I don't know if you can read this, it says, Shamisen of Japan, build it, play it, annoy your neighbors! And, and I'm, I'll be using this pick, um, <laughs> because honestly, I, I, I tried, I tried using this. And... Ready, though. <laughs> thank you, but this is so, it feels so weird, so... Um, we, we, I'm sure we'll, we'll get to that. Now, uh, as, you, as you've seen, uh, the crossfade, I added this because uh, Kyle was hearing himself through my microphone, and um, I want to give Kyle the stage. So There's enough voices in my head already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, this is a fretless instrument. I mean, you have to be really precise. Played around with like fretless guitars. Um, I have the U bass, which is fretless, but it has the fret markings. Oh. It's a it's a completely different feeling than than a normal guitar neck. It has three strings. I tuned it to C G C, but you can tune it differently, right? You can tune it to C F C. Right, and as well as C F uh, B flat, mm -hmm. which is which is the same as like uh, on the guitar. I guess I forget which I forget which three strings. Um, also, an interesting thing, like an interesting thing, is you don't necessarily have to. It doesn't have to be C as the root. Mm -hmm. You can adjust down be whatever you're whoever you're playing with. Like if a singer has a low range, you can tune it down to B A or such. It's it has such a dry, yet soulful quality to it. I think so much of that has to do with the whole percussive aspect. Yeah. Like a banjo, or, I mean, it's basically you're hitting a drum. Right. You know, as you're striking. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems like for shamisen especially, those, those who like it love it. It's a very, I don't know if there's many people who are like, eh, shamisen, that's okay. <laughs> it's they really like it, or, oh, it's that twangy, yeah. twangy loud instrument with the neighbors agree. Um, <laughs> I, I love it. I, I, when, um, when I put it together, I started playing it, and I, I got addicted to it. I played for like an hour, oh, nice. and then when I, um, 
returned to the living room, <laughs> my wife said, what was that? that? That sounded like a banjo with a cold. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good description. <laughs> yeah. But I, I love it. And you're right. I mean, you, there is the, the whole, the whole uh, drum aspect. I haven't thought of that. So were you using the, the drum for a percussive effect right now when you were playing? Yeah, exactly. Um, when you strike down, we might as well do a little, uh, you know, plectrum, this, this one. A little discussion about two. When, when it's striking down, uh, closer would be better, but that's fine. When we're striking down, w after we strike the string, <laughs> the, the, the tip of the plectrum uh, goes into the skin. Mm -hmm. So often when I say, yeah, exactly, exactly. We, we want that. We want that. That's exactly. That's the whole reason of using such a large, awkward plectrum is that mm -hmm. it's like a drumstick in a way. We're using it to get that, mm -hmm. um, uh, the, you know, the whip-like, you know, just yeah. like a drummer, such as very loose, relaxed hands. But Actually, it's, um, it's also, now that you're, because I was under the impression that I'm, I'm not supposed to hit. But if, if we are supposed to hit, that actually takes a lot of pressure off the plane because it, it enables you to really hit the strings. Yeah. So um, is there a reason why um, the, the strings are, are tuned in a, in a fifth or a fourth um, interval? That's a good question. <clears throat> Excuse me. The other three tunings, I think the CFC, mm -hmm. this is the most original. Now I'm going on a limb, because uh, I don't actually fully know, but it's, it's called Hong Cholshi, which means like bass tuning. Mm -hmm. So, like the a lot of the uh, Nagu to the classical songs are played, like from the 1700s, 1800s, are played in this tuning. And shamisen itself came to Japan around the 1500s, mm -hmm. so it's relatively recent. C uh, can you play us something in, in this tuning, in the sure. bass tuning? Um, this is more of kind of a cla this would be like a, a classical um, nakaguchi piece, which means long song. Often mm -hmm. they're between 10 to 30 minutes. Um, they would have ads if it was a YouTube performance. <laughs> Is, is there improvisation involved as well, or is it always written music? Right. For the classical ones, it's the written music, mm -hmm. um, the formal stuff. All the formal stuff is very written, very structured, um, like a lot of the Japanese arts. Only the newest one, the, what's called Tsungaru style. Tsungaru is a region of Japan, the northern uh, Aomori. Mm -hmm. uh, three hours ago of Tokyo, I think, or four hours more. Um, anywho, in the like 1800s, in this snowy cold area, the blind, they're the, the blind folks, the blind men, their only two occupations was either, uh, were either massage or music, like playing door to door with shamisen, the main instrument. Mm -hmm. And because they weren't really, there was no schools for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and how, how the blind would do this is the older veteran blind player would teach the young, the young blind mm -hmm. boy how to play. And it's just very rudimentary stuff to play the local popular songs or whatever at the time. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and then they would just go door to door, play, and then the uh, owner of the house or whatever would come out, give money, food, anything. Often, they would just bang, do just a lot of banging, and then the people would give food for them to leave. This style would get more flashier, play more dramatic, more harder mm -hmm. uh, than the other. The classical styles, they did, stri they do strike the skin, but definitely not to the same degree as like what I just what I played mm -hmm. in the beginning. So, uh, so what would be like a basic melody, a basic uh, scale? Let's say. Have you heard the song uh, Sakura? <laughs> By chance? That's all. I mean, you're so fast with it. Uh, is okay. is there anything that that um, was challenging for you when you started to play the shamisen? The definitely the plectrum, the bachi. Um, definitely, that's the hardest part. Because uh, I started, you know, learning mandolin when I was seven. Then mm -hmm. banjo, little guitar, fiddle, bass, uh, bluegrass instruments. So by the time I picked this up, you know, around thirteen, I was already very comfortable with. The left hand side of things, mm -hmm. you know, pull off hammer ons, that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, I actually saw how fast the pull offs and hammer ons are. Uh, it's it's almost percussive, like uh, when, when you. So how how do you make them sound so percussive when you? By when you let's see when you pull the string, you're pulling it downward as if you're pulling it to your palm. So then it, it kind of snapped, almost snaps mm. against the edge of the... So it's not, so it's not out, outside, it's inwards. Exactly. Okay, so I got it. Very twangy, very twangy. Yeah, it, do, it does make a lot of difference. And, and uh, um, do, you, do you still play guitar and mandolin? And do, do you ever combine the... Because it's it's so um, there's something so bluesy about this as well. It sounds. You know, that's kind of the thing. Uh, uh, last year, one of my students he wanted me to show him like how to incorporate shamisen with modern music or fusion and mm -hmm. And long story short, what I kind of realized is, you know, music is all kind of the same in a way. It's all melodies. Right. So you can't, like, if a song is bluesy, adding shamisen wouldn't mean doing, like, a Japanese song scale. Guitar, mandolin, shamisen, they all have... They all have slides, they all have right. pull-offs and all... It's all kind of the same. What really sets the genre is more the melody, the songs, than the techniques used. Right. To, I mean, to the, in the broad picture. Feels common, at least in, among the you know folk songs and such. Not folk songs, uh, the repertoire. That kind of just from there. Mm. So like, I think I think a part of a huge part of it is this. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, because in if if we're thinking about Middle Eastern or Spanish music, the the focus would be. So the Japanese sound actually comes from this. Perhaps also <laughs> lack like less trills. Well. I guess different kind of trills. 
How would you how would you play a trill? Uh, well, okay, for at least for generally for Japanese music, there isn't that much. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, it would just be isolated notes. Oh, like here, like here. Exactly. Using a pole to go da 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 da. Wow, that 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 your pull offs are amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that. It's the tickling of the strings. Yeah. So. Now, nowadays, uh, players use the pinky, uh, mm -hmm. very modern players, but traditionally it's generally the index finger and ring finger mm -hmm. are used. The index finger is used for the movement, and the ring or middle finger are used if you're just popping up to hit a note and then go back down, or for the techniques, for the pull-offs or things. Which is why if you isolate just to these, you can't do multiple. You know, shamisen, as you can, as you know, it doesn't have much sustain, so we really have to milk it out as much. Really? As yeah. Um, it's, um, yeah, the vibrato is very relaxed. You you start when you strike, you start at the position, and then you move. You know, maybe five millimeters higher and then back down. Yeah, so this is... And that's a key to the, I guess, the next level, the more professional level of Chamisa playing is always having vibrato going for that very... So, so no Zach Wilde style... Uh, no, like... You could. <laughs> well, actually, actually, they'll do, you know. You know, which yeah. is very like one moment, boom, very intentional, dwa, 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 and then carrying on. So, so that was that was a different scale. It sounded very, it sounded different. Yes. Um, so what we were doing before is more the classical, classical music kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The modern Tsugaru, what's called Tsugaru style, that was developed in, like the the current style was really developed in the 1970s, 1960s, 1970s and the, what you call the fathers of the style, they had access to like blues, rock, uh, mm -hmm. jazz on the radio, and mm -hmm. even the blind, the blind players. And that influenced what became this new style of shamisen playing. So mm -hmm. the scale changed. Um, so for this modern Tsugaru style, Very different, very different than the classical. Yeah. And a lot of classical players don't even consider this style as traditional. Mm. It's like really on the fence. That's just, just bluesy? Just the pentatonic scale, the, the actual pentatonic scale. Can you play it with your fingers, or is it always the, or, or is it always? Is it no? Well, I mean, it's the whole thing with you know, can you, should you? It's all those you know, uh, cultural, aesthetic paradigms. Like right. if you're in the classical culture. Yeah. So tra traditionally, aesthetic. yeah, traditionally you'd use. You'd use this. Exactly. And tr traditionally for a specific style, you'd use a certain material of the plectrum. Mm -hmm. Outside of it, no, of course you can do... Um...
You can do whatever. For be, for the bendy sound would be going up and down. Because mm -hmm. you can really get nice wild. That sort of thing. <laughs> Can you maybe play for us um, a couple of tunes, one that demonstrates more traditional sounds and one that demonstrates more modern sounds that sure. I think that would be beautiful. Yeah, sure, absolutely. traditional melody uh, and that's often done also that song is done for the uh, modern style too so I'll demonstrate that to show the more variety uh -huh. 